Okay, great. We're up and live. Uh, welcome back everybody to the Greater Sydney Landcare webinar series. This is our last webinar for a little while actually because everyone's um, out of lockdown. Um, so tonight we're going to be going on a little journey on the Parramatta River. We've got um, Jasmine um, Paget from the Our Living River um, from the Riverkeeper Network um, and she's going to be telling us about Parramatta River, um, plans to make it a bit more swimmable for us um, and all the work that her organisation has been doing um, to help community members come together um, and regenerate the river um, and protect it. All right, so first I'll just begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians um, of the lands that we're all joining from tonight. Um, I'm on Dara Country, <coughs> Dara Country myself um, and recognising their elders past and present. Uh, I acknowledge and respect their continuing culture and, and the contribution they make to the lands of Greater Sydney. Um, and um, <clears throat> as a traditional land carers, I extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us tonight. So I'll hand over to Jasmine and she'll okay. start. Oh, just oh. a bit of housekeeping first. We've got a question and answer tab at the bottom of the screen. So if you've got any questions for Jasmine, um, throughout the night, you can click on that and type in your question and we'll get to the end of the All right, thanks very much. Okay, okay, well, I'm hoping that you can hear me well enough. Um, please let us know if there's any sound or picture issues and we'll uh, attempt to deal with that. Uh, I'd, uh, uh, I'm just going to start, let's see. Uh, Uh, so uh, what I uh, uh, what I have here is what I um, intend to share with you in this half hour or so. I want to talk about inspiration, the care for catchment, people and their choices of icons, waterway health, what what is river keeping, and something around the amazing change makers program that we ran earlier. And it's amazing because of the people who emerged and, and finished that course and I am inspired by them. I would like to acknowledge the indigenous people of this land. I am on uh, Darug and Aura land in terms of the Parramatta River, uh, 29 uh, clans. And I would also like to acknowledge particular elders who have helped me to understand. In particular, there's a singer songwriter, Jacinta Tobin, who has since become an elder, who really 20 years ago uh, challenged me to do more uh, in, in terms of uh, acknowledging Aboriginal people and involving Aboriginal people in the environmental education programs that I was running. I also would like to acknowledge uh, Uncle Chris Tobin, who is an amazing educator, and he has inspired me in terms of how to capture young people's attention and, uh, and hold it. Uh, so I have been taught by some really amazing people, uh, Annie Sharon Halls in uh, Kundungra lands as well. Uh, so, uh, in terms of the Parramatta River Catchment Group, we are working with Indigenous people around a Designing with Country project that hopefully we can share with you on another webinar in, the, uh, in next year. And uh, I think it's an amazing process. Can I just stop for a moment? Is there a problem for you about the uh, a sound? No. So um, I think it's okay. Yeah, there's some beeping thing that's happening, and I'm sorry about that. Okay, uh, so I just, um, river keepers around the world are an amazing bunch of people. So there's river keepers in the Hudson River in New York, and they have been uh, instrumental in protecting so many reaches of that land, um, and particularly around protecting fish and, um, and working very strongly with their communities. 
I've just put in George's River Keeper, who's uh, uh, in the Sydney Basin. Uh, the rivers in Sydney Basin work together on, on, on all sorts of things, uh, but we are uh, uh, work particularly with our councils as our first priority, but we work on joint projects, which I will tell you about uh, later in the talk. I, the Yarra River in, in Melbourne is a, also a great um, inspiring organization. It's a not-for-profit, has an, uh, really a lot of young people involved. It's fantastic. I, I just, uh, this was our theme for Riverfest, caring for catchment. It's not a, um, a new theme, but I just uh, want to acknowledge that we have all been through a difficult time with COVID-19 in various forms. Um, and we are really aware that people um, needed to walk and, and visit their local areas. Uh, one of the consequences is that there was a very busy bay run, for example, on the Parramatta River, but also people found uh, a less well-known places. Uh, one of our Riverkeeper ambassadors, Kelly, had uh, made sure that she visited, visited and recorded places and uh, and even though she's been doing that for several years, she found new places in her five kilometer zone. Uh, our other Riverkeeper ambassador, uh, Charlene, has been uh, encouraging people to ride within their local area and it will remain a five kilometer zone as a nice bike ride for someone who's new to riding and it will focus our attentions in different ways. Anyway, um, I'll, I, uh, the river, Fest uh, uh, worked on uh, connecting people with both their local area, with the Toon Cabby Treasures run by Jules, another Riverkeeper ambassador. Thank you, Jules, if you're here. And uh, also paying attention to uh, our icon species. I just, uh, 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 to, do, to be a Riverkeeper, is one thing, but there's this huge team around us, uh, uh, each of us, wherever we're river keeping. So one of the things is uh, local government working together uh, uh, to protect the river. This is fundamental because as you know, rivers are often boundaries between local government areas. And yet the we need to cooperate and work together to protect that river. So the Parramatta River uh, is surrounded by 11 councils. Nine of them are members of the Parramatta River Catchment Group. Sydney Water, a crucial partner, has also uh, plays a major role. So I like this project because I don't have to do strategic planning. It's been done already. There's been a very strong strategic direction, and I'm about implementation. I'm really liking that role. This is, uh, this is a slide is just to let you know that that master plan, even though it uh, is a, a bureaucratic thing, uh, it is very vital to river keeping. And, it, uh, and I am just going to show you some of the things. So it, it is about making a Parramatta River a living river and making Parramatta swimmable again by 2025. The linkage is really important. Uh, the um, the uh, mission to make Parramatta River swimmable motivated people in a way that making the river livable would not. So uh, that is the reality. More people are interested in the human impact uh, rather than the impact on the living creatures that depend on the river. Um, strategically, it's very sensible. Also, it's great to be able to have places that we can swim and it changes people's relationship with the river. So I'll just go. Uh, 
to do that, I, to do that kind of uh, um, first step, get swimming, we have a river watch program that's organized by Sydney Water. It's looking at uh, new swimming spots. Uh, councils have indicated the, uh, the ones that they think can happen in their local areas. The standardized, the standards is about planning and uh, blue green grids to improve the water quality and improve the ecosystem health. Certainly uh, stormwater runoff is absolutely vital and there's a lot of work that's being done on that. Uh, stopping sewer overflows, absolutely vital, so critical. Now we come to the steps that I'm most involved with, which is involve the community and bring in nature. So they have a nice little Godwit there that I think was drawn by the student from Abbotsley um, Public School. I, I just uh, talk about the swim sites here. There are four swim sites uh, currently, and there are uh, plans for others. Obviously, further up the river you go, the more difficult it is. Uh, it's easier in areas that are uh, highly tidal and uh, cleaned cleaned by the tide. Uh, I, I could talk for some time about the swim sites, but I'm just going to give you an indication that that's happening. And so, therefore, what is my role as a riverkeeper and what is the role of other people who are joining me in their riverkeeping process? I... I um, when the master plan was started, there was um, huge community consultation and it was lots of fun as well. Uh, Sarah was an amazing uh, leader in that process. And really we, um, uh, for example, uh, we were encouraging people to consider swimming and consider what they need to do themselves and encourage other people to do to make it a great place to swim. I just thought I'd be showing you this beautiful place. And, and in fact, the screen behind me is also of Lake Parramatta, an amazing treasure and an amazing story of council and community and other people working together to protect this catchment, improve this catchment so it was swimmable on the Hunts Creek. And I, there is a, a great story in that. And um, many people have worked a number of years to make this happen. It's a great place to visit and I, I, a good story about um, the value of consistent long-term work. Uh, I thought I'd also show some signs. People sometimes don't like signs, but I, these signs tell a story. So for on the left, there is a catfish. That is, uh, that sign is there because uh, one of our Riverkeeper ambassadors was visiting and catfish, of course, live in Lake Parramatta. And the, one of the catfish families had decided to have their nest very close and in fact on the edge of the swimming area and were very protective uh, of that nest. So uh, if you're swimming in natural water, you have to share it with the animals that like to live there as well. I, uh, I'm, uh, I, uh, the icons or mascot species were chosen to help us connect in with the needs of that animal, but also the needs of the ecosystem that supports that animal. So for example, the godwits need a muddy, a worm-filled uh, shores of the river. Uh, you can see the godwit's long beak that um, uh, likes to uh, uh, poke around in the mud and get all the uh, little creatures that are living there. Uh, it's a problem when uh, the muddy banks are, are built upon. So in Canada Bay, there's quite a lot of work to protect that area. 
uh, and protect the godwits when they're visiting uh, from dogs, for example, uh, and other critters that will disturb them in their feeding. Godwits are an amazing creature that fly to the Northern Hemisphere uh, uh, each autumn and return in October. So they've just returned. It's an amazing thing. I, I recommend going to Hen and Chicken Bay and having a look at the Godwits feeding and just uh, um, be amazed at this small bird that can travel 11,000 kilometers without stopping um, twice a year. Uh, we have an amazing place. Uh, uh, on the right uh, is uh, a change maker project called Parramatta River Heroes. The, that group uh, uh, produced uh, small cutouts that were used uh, to, uh, for an artwork. So in, uh, people were encouraged to paint them. And so there's the long neck turtle, the godwit, the powerful owl, the striped marsh frog, and uh, very on the edge, the southern myotis, the flying bat. It's all um, uh, in, in terms of uh, ecosystem, about e uh, estuaries around uh, fresh water. And, uh, and even though some of those species are normally common, like the striped marsh frog and the long neck turtle, we have seen a crash in their abundance. And we need to make sure that we up our protection of riparian zones around the creeks that feed into the river. And there's a number of other things we need to do, but that's some of it. Uh, I could not do my work without Riverkeeper Ambassadors. I have four Riverkeeper Ambassadors and they've been incredibly supportive of the work I do, but also it's a vision about how to keep uh, the river uh, uh, activities going, how to engage more people, how to deepen the engagements that we do have. Uh, at, uh, to the left, uh, we have uh, Charlene who runs uh, a cycling uh, uh, organization called Advantageous and Parramatta Cycle Tours. She runs these a uh, great trips around the fish traps and she's standing next to a fish trap and explains the, the things that people might just walk over and not pay attention to. It's a great way of understanding the center area of Parramatta in a different way. Now, Jules might be mad at me, but that I love this photo of Jules. She had been working very hard on a warm day to do a cleanup and do lots of work with her group, the Plastic Pluckers in Toongabby Creek. An amazing lot of work and uh, uh, a consistent effort. And um, I hope that Jules may be able to talk later in the uh, session or at least uh, write something on the Q&A about the Toon Gabby treasures or the Friends of Toon Gabby. Uh, so we do focus uh, on supporting Clean Up Australia Day. There were 80 Clean Up Australia say, sites this year. And uh, Kelly, the, uh, an ambassador working in George Kendall Park in the uh, Parramatta River, uh, 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 organizing people to pick up litter from mangrove areas. In the front, we have the Love Your Waterways or what uh, was the River Aware program. So we're just uh, constantly working on sort of um, messaging to encourage people to do those small daily actions that make a big difference. I've just put River Fest here because it was, uh, we've just finished it in October and it was a great event. We had uh, it, uh, had a lot of online because we had to. Uh, it's an opportunity to talk about 
the range of ways in which we can care for the river and the creeks and the lands in between. I, uh, I work also with bush care and the uh, photo on the right is at Sisters Bay, Des Moines. Love Your Waterways was mostly an online campaign, but we're working uh, to find ways in which we deepen this uh, project and uh, uh, deepen the project and, uh, and be positive as well about the possibility of change and to uh, keep on working out how we can both measure and uh, improve um, people's responses to these messages. Uh, we had a photo campaign and we had very nice photos coming up. I'm just going to zoom through this right now. I wanted to talk about Change Makers. Change Makers uh, was an invitation to our community to join a quite a considerable uh, um, project of uh, a, a catchment crawl and seven evening workshops. In the, that process, we wanted people to design and develop a pilot project and test it. Everyone rose to the challenge, it was amazing. We had 22 people finish the process and then COVID struck again and we had to be locked down. Uh, we have uh, six projects poised uh, for action when we can do more um, community actions out and about. And several projects have uh, a web-based web kind of approach, uh, educational uh, resources being developed. Uh, and all of them have a mixture of like a, a immediate and long-term goals. I'll just uh, share with you the film. The film does not capture all of the core, uh, all of the people um, that are doing things, but it'll give you an idea. Ah, ah, I'm giving away my secrets. Okay.
before I finish my talk, I'd like to also mention the uh, elected councillors who are part of Parramatta River Catchment Group. So we have a governance structure that has elected members and senior officers from each of the member councils. This is really important because it is about embedding change in councils where it can make a difference. And uh, we're a small group of, of people who are passionately caring about uh, the river, but we're most of the, the people who are doing the work are already working in, in councils and the councillors are remain really passionate even when the, their term is over. So it's, it's a, a project that really calls to people's hearts. So I am just suggesting a very simple things. You can join our e-newsletter so you can find out what's going on. We have a Riverkeeper network on Facebook. You have to go Parramatta River Riverkeeper network, otherwise you might end up with somebody else's Riverkeeper network. I, I, I'd like to strongly encourage you to join one of the many citizen science projects and uh, particularly uh, November is turtle month, but there's frog ID and we have a citizen sign of that, which we are in the process of delivering that will be very locally based. And the Riverkeeper ambassadors run activities and the change makers will be shortly running activities as well. Uh, just to give you a little bit of information about the Million Turtles project. So if you type in the millionturtles.com, you'll come up with the information sessions that they're running in November. Uh, one of the key people is Dr. Ricky Spencer, who presented at Riverfest last week. It was a really great uh, and, um, and thorough uh, information session. We, of course, because of webinars, have recorded it. But uh, um, I'd encourage you uh, to find out at any rate and find out what you can do and find out how you could get involved in potentially finding nests or recording uh, information on the turtle set. So me, I'm Jasmine Page at, at ourlivingriver.com.au. And that's about half an hour. Is there, I'm going to stop sharing now. And I'm hoping that there's some questions. Um, there's not many at the moment. There may be some from people watching on Facebook. They can type them in on the comments section if you've got any question. Um, I have a question though. Um, yep. Just in terms of you were talking about at the beginning, um, the work you're doing with traditional owners. Um, yes, yeah, so the design, the design with a country project is working on a process of uh, having a way of uh, visitors or residents in the Parramatta River understanding what's going on, but not necessarily having lots of signage. I mean, it, people you like yourself and myself probably read signs, but a lot of other people don't. So it's like looking at ways in which we could uh, have interpretive furniture or interpretive uh, seating that gives people knowledge and understanding about uh, the, the history of the area. Uh, I, uh, I, it's early days in how that's looking, but they're just deeply interested in uh, ecological awareness that is really, really intermixed with cultural understandings. So really making sure that people don't go that all nature is like empty of people that's a good nature there's going no people in nature need to go together and how do we work together how do how do the people help the nature be um more sustainable great and so that's ongoing then yes that's a project that's in process right now 
but we're quite excited about it. Mm. Because it's a, a different way of looking at um, a how to how to explain what's going on uh, currently and in the past uh, uh, re uh, regarding indigenous perspectives of the river. Yeah, great. And are any of the other networks doing like the Cooks River and all of that sort of thing? Are they doing something similar? Or? Um, the Cooks River ha has employed an Aboriginal land carer. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, he's working with Aboriginal people who are living in the Cooks River catchment, as well as encouraging non-Aboriginal people to understand more about Aboriginal perspectives. Uh, uh, it's interesting that you know Western Sydney has an, a large number of Aboriginal people living here, uh, and many people call themselves river people. Uh, they may have been born near another river, but they have a special feeling for fresh water, salt water, that kind of mix. It's yeah, it's, I've had some such interesting conversations about people's notions about rivers. I yeah. myself grew up in Canada near a creek that flew into a lake. It's quite different kind of environment in southern Ontario because it's so impacted by the ice age and um, and so the environment is kind of scraped of of diversity whereas here the, the landscape is older and more diverse and and just much more complicated and exciting. Yeah, and it, it, Parramatta is such a multicultural place as well, isn't it? Um, yes. So that, yeah, there'd be a lot of... So, I, yes, I, uh, uh, just over half of our population have been born elsewhere, or at least one member of the household has been born elsewhere. And so it is a, an opportunity to connect with people who have a... a uh, a, an understanding about rivers and environment from a different place. Hi. Uh, okay. And just in terms of those um, change maker projects, is there any sort of significant ones that came out of that? Um, yes, I'm, yeah. I was hoping that you'd ask. <laughs> <laughs> I left that tang dangling. Yeah, I was hoping great. I. We, uh, uh, there was a group called the Greener Gatherings, which you might have seen, who is really interested in having alternatives to single-use plastic picnics. So uh, uh, using the kind of boomerang bag idea where you borrow, uh, or libraries, where you, you might borrow the picnic set uh, and, and then you, um, instead of, you know, buying plastic plates, plastic knives, forks, blah, blah, blah. So that you you can have a, a great party and a celebratory party, but really mindful of the plastic uh, crap that ends up being put in the bin at the end of the day. So uh, they're, uh, they, they've got a website, they've done some surveys, of people at the Ride Sustainability uh, Festival that was held in June around World Environment Day uh, uh, to really gather what people would take up and what their issues are. Uh, it, uh, most of the members of that group have small children and they're aware that children's parties often have little gadgets that are plastic and you know just having things that are not plastic for children. Mm -hmm. And more long lasting. So that's a great project. The uh, lollipop ladies uh, have uh, collected all those lollipop sticks um, uh, uh, through um, the cleanups and have made a sculpture, a lollipop sculpture, and they're getting people to guess how many there are. Uh, but really, what they're wanting is parents to pay more attention to uh, teaching their children about not dropping that stick, even though it's a small thing, uh, not dropping the stick, and also working with confectionery places to 
change their packaging which uh, to something that's biodegradable, which would be quite marvelous. No, oh, great. And so it's a it's a talking point because you know most people can see that preventative would be easier. Uh, there was a group uh, looking at community gardens and uh, encouraging uh, people to join a community garden and learn how to uh, not waste food, learn how to compost better, whether or not you're in an apartment or a house. So that's a great idea. Uh, there's um, uh, para aware, it's just making, uh, helping people become more aware of the work that's been done by a number of people and the ways in which you could get involved. Uh, mm -hmm. They had a very successful uh, event uh, showing people about the historic uh, swim sites and and talking about the swim sites that we're planning to open uh, in a year or two. Mm -hmm. And uh, several of the members of that group are scientists and can talk the science talk about the kind of deep work that's done to make sure that there are safe sites. Oh, great. Well, that's some really good outcomes from that program, hey? Well, yeah, I I was really moved. I mean, I I left out three groups. I'm just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so they're they're an amazing group of people, and they've made connections with each other. And I um, I'm hearing on the grapevine that a few people have made some other projects that they're they're keen about. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so it sort of sparked off different uh, connections. And how did those people become involved? Were they sort of already? So we, um, we, uh, we used a methodology that the Cooks River had done, uh, you know, just inviting residents to uh, join this project. They had to uh, um, fill out an application form and explain why they were interested, talk to us about what kind of groups that they were involved with. And I give some indication that they were stayers and um, they were. <laughs> uh, I, so we, we, so it was a, a process where we um, had a limited number of places and we, uh, we started with a few more because of course life intervenes and people have to um, stop. Uh, unfortunately, we lost a few. Uh, the uh, so they they applied. Uh, we um, uh, we invited them, and uh, it was free. It's been sponsored by the Parramatta River Catchment Group. Uh, I should say that my position is also partially uh, and significantly funded by Landcare. And Landcare is really interested in community engagement in such things as river care and the and caring for the land that cares the river. Uh, we had amazing uh, talks by different specialists so that people could get a, 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 a sense of the breadth of the work that we do. And we were really also focused on process. So how do you form a group how do you how do you um uh work together fairly quickly and uh within a few sessions design and deliver uh, a, a project i i was amazed that people could do that mm -hmm. and uh i felt that the riverkeeper ambassadors all four of them you you saw maybe a picture of the junior riverkeeper she came along as well mm -hmm. all four were inspiring in different ways and they the, the adults participated as members and mentor, and internal uh, mentors mm -hmm. and very powerful, uh, uh, very powerful. Uh, sometimes you can't like plan it exactly. It, it just worked. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, I'm very thankful. I agree. And then just in terms of, so you were mentioning citizen science, um, is there a stream watch? Are there stream watch groups? Or not just in terms of monitoring water quality and that sort of thing? Are there any? Groups? 
Great so at this stage, we uh, don't have Streamwatch ourselves, but we are intending to do that. We're really interested in having, you know, a care for streams, the freshwater streams. So this, this Streamwatch project has uh, become more in the reach of organizations like ours because they've got a, um, a cheaper kit. And so I can have several kits that I can give to volunteers. And we're looking forward to rolling out that next year. Uh, the citizen science that we are uh, focused on is uh, related to our icon species. So uh, uh, Canada Bay Council, for example, does a lot of work on the godwit and making sure that they have the right uh, uh, environment for the, for the godwit. That's also uh, the work of the uh, Sydney Olympic Park Authority and their wetlands people. They do a lot of work in that area. Uh, the turtle is something that we are just uh, launching uh, uh, this coming month. And Dr. Ricky Spencer ha really wants more people to be involved in uh, noticing where nests uh, are or were. So what he says is that if you notice broken shell and it's fairly um, clear um, that it's turtle eggs, he wants to know where that nest is because when even even though that will have probably meant that all those eggs were eaten by a fox or some other creature, then we know where that nest is and perhaps next year we will be able to uh, protect that nest better. So, um, so I would encourage people to connect with the One Million Turtles project. Uh, we, uh, we work very closely with BirdLife Australia and they have the amazing Powerful Owl project. And they also have the amazing Judy Harrington who comes and lot, does lots of talks for us. And she's quite passionate about the sea eagles as well, the, the project that, uh, um, uh, has a video camera on the nest and the birds, the young birds have recently left the nest. It's all very interesting about what's going to happen. Uh, uh, the powerful owl is uh, an amazing creature and they uh, has particular requirements about forest land and it can live in and does live in uh, riparian zones, which are quite narrow, but have the right kind of environment for the powerful owl to perch to look for food or, or have enough uh, vegetation to be safe for roosting overnight and such like nesting. So I don't think they roost. It's they're too magnificent to roost. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, what we can do, I'm going to be sharing this video, um, Jasmine, to everyone that registered. So I'll send out a list of, with the links, yeah, to yeah, some yeah. of the citizen science things as well. Yeah. yeah. So, and we are developing a citizen science app with Aaron Turk of uh, DPI, uh, the Department of Planning yeah. and Infrastructure. Is that right? In planning DPI. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, he is an amazing person. Uh, Nell and he have been working on this uh, based on a, um, a, a program called Cyber Tracker, which is used with rangers across the world. And it's, it's a, a kind of a low key app, but what it means is that we can tailor, tailor it to a particular area. So we're thinking of having one that would focus on Lake Parramatta. And so when you call up the Lake Parramatta, part of the app, it will highlight the species that are found in Lake Parramatta. And that, that will uh, uh, sort of be a limited number. And then it's easier for you if you're new to work out how to identify species and you can have shorter lists to go through and such like. Um, but also it gives us some feedback about uh, what people are noticing in a particular area. So it could be, mm. um, 
It could be uh, Subiaco Creek, for example, which does actually have a, a stream watch group uh, run by a, um, a business. Uh, is Subiaco Creek uh, maybe, you know, a, a small number of people are interested in like a bit of stream watch there. Someone's interested in birds, someone's interested in turtles. So it, it gives a bigger picture of the ecosystem health altogether rather than being species focused. Mm -hmm. So we're, and I, different things will appeal to different people. Sure. And then what do you think then about this? Um, is, is it going to be swimmable? Well, there's places that are swimmable already. Already. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, uh, the uh, Don Fraser Pool in Balmain uh, opened at, uh, last month. And so that's pretty amazing. It's, they've put a lot of work in to uh, make that an amazing place. And Chiswick is a pool, uh, uh, a fenced uh, um, uh, swimming place already. We're looking at uh, Bayview, uh, Bayview as a swimming area and Bedlam Bay in Hunters Hill. And then there's a couple of other places that are what are called activated because we're not quite ready to go for swimming, but it means that it'll be much easier to put your canoe in there or you can paddle along the river. And instead of having a seawall that stops you, you can kind of connect with the water at McIlvain Park and at Putney. So we this okay. steps down and low tide. So there's ways in which um, people can connect and touch the water actually. So that's that's a that's a start. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and City of Sydney has uh, taken up the idea of uh, swimmable places as well just recently. So it's an idea that has whose time has come and we have the capacity to clean up things well enough for it to be a really um, much more thoroughly swimmable place. Mm -hmm. Now, there's one question here from um, Joanna, and she's asking, is there a river keeper for Lane Cove River? No, there isn't. Uh, the um, uh, Lane Cove is a member of the Sydney Coastal Council's group, and they don't have a river keeper yet. They're, they're um, working, I know a little bit about the Lane Cove because, of course, we're neighbours. And also, uh, we are working jointly together uh, on litter prevention. Uh, so one of the key things about swimming and healthy waterways is to prevent litter getting into the river. And we're working together with the Sydney Coastal Councils to do that. We need people to help us and to come up with ideas and to tell us where there's hot spots and uh, let us know what's going on. But I'd suggest you talk to the Sydney Coastal Councils group as well if you want more waterways health um, a volunteer activities. Oh, great. All right. I might. I think that's all the questions tonight. Yeah. Um, did you have any closing comments, Jasmine? Or your... uh, I I would say that I really like working with my land care buddies, and I. Uh, feel very supported by having a group of people that I can connect with and talk about land care issues and working out how to engage more people in the work that we do jointly. Uh, I'm excited to continue that. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much um, for your presentation and all the work you do. That's a Parramatta is a pretty big catchment, so it's a, it's a lot of work. There's a big team, really. Yeah, you're great. Ways. Um, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's a small group of three in the Parramatta River catchment group mm -hmm. itself, but it, it works because people are engaged in different ways, both in the paid workforce and volunteers. Yeah, it's fantastic. And you've had some great outcomes. It's really very inspiring. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, so just for in terms of Greater Sydney Land Care, we actually have been doing some plantings um, through creating canopies as well. Um, so plantings in the catchment area, I guess. Um, 
and we'll be planting more probably not until next year if you feel like coming out and planting a few trees you can jump on our website um what i'm going to do after this is send the video out to everyone that registered and i'm going to include all the links that jasmine has mentioned so if you interested in getting in contact with her um, for some of the things that she's mentioned, you can do so. Um, and yeah, all that citizen science stuff and the, um, all the other programs that she talked about. All right, so keep your eye out. Thanks okay. very much for joining us. Okay. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.